Good day there, this is Sarah and Matt from Amateur Filmies and today we are bringing you another Blu-ray haul. So we've got a bunch of Blu-rays and DVDs from a movie lot we got recently. We have orders from Amazon and a few Second Sight orders as well as two very special box sets that we cannot wait to show you. So as Sarah mentioned at the start of the video, we got a lot of these movies from like a movie lot that we bought from the collector named Craig, who we've mentioned a few times in our past few haul videos, and I'm sure we'll mention him a few more times in future haul videos <laughs> as well. Uh, but we've got about five DVDs or so here to show, so we'll go through those first. Um, the first one we have here is Welcome to the Doll House, which I'm very excited to watch because this one's actually directed by Todd Salons, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, and he did the film Happiness, which I also showed in a Blu-ray haul a few videos back, and I absolutely love that film. It's a really, really really dark comedy um with some really a-list actors in it actually um hilarious but also very disturbing um sarah hasn't watched it yet but i've watched it a couple of times and if this movie is anything like that i'm sure i will like this one even though it's probably going to be messed up too so this next one actually funnily enough is a second sight release i didn't realize this until after i'd already bought it from him um but this is the kingdom which is like a mini mini series by director lars von trier and this was from earlier on in his career and i remember i had like an, an old I think it was a fake DVD, like a manufactured DVD I got from a record shop. I bought it for like $2, but never got around to watching it. But I actually have a really good release of it now. So I'm excited to dig into it, especially because I really like Lars von Trier's films. Um, you know, I feel a bit mixed on some of them, but overall, I think he's a very interesting director. And I'm sure that this one will be an interesting watch as well. We have Pink Flamingos by John Waters. And this movie is infamous. It stars Divine. And I really don't know what to expect going into this one. I expect to be grossed out and disgusted, yep. <laughs> but I'm not sure how. You're about right with your expectations. <laughs> it's going to be gross. <laughs> so this next DVD has a unique characteristic of being my first ever afterpay order. <laughs> this is Itchy. Um, and this is the prequel to Itchy the Killer. And this was actually released by Unearthed Films. And I haven't watched it yet. It's still sealed. But I'm a huge fan of Itchy the Killer and just Takashi Miike in general. Although this one isn't directed by Takashi Miike. I love Itchy the Killer, the film, enough to obviously want to check out the prequel to it. So I'm expecting good things. And just to plug one of our other videos, our most recent video is a ranking of the Friday the 13th films in the entire franchise. So if you're interested in our thoughts on that, definitely check out that video. However, in the meantime, we do have a Friday the 13th related pickup. Uh, and this is the, actually the Friday the 13th TV series, which I know has nothing to do with the actual uh, franchise apart from just sharing the same name. Uh, but I couldn't pass, uh, pass up getting these because they're just such an oddity and I actually have heard pretty decent things about them. If I'm not mistaken, I think they may be an actual anthology series which, you know, we've talked about a whole bunch, you know, about how much we love our horror anthology stuff. Yeah. So I know it's, it hasn't got Jason in it. It just has the same name, but I'm still interested to check it out regardless. Now we're moving on to Blu-rays and we picked this up finally. I didn't realize we actually didn't have a physical copy of it. So we picked this up from Craig and that is American Psycho, Mary Harron. Absolutely amazing. And uh, re-watching it, uh, we re-watched it with my mum who usually hates horror movies. And she thought this was the funniest movie ever. And because it is really like a, it is a satire of like the capitalist mm. sort of money hungry Wall Street banker types. And I didn't realize how sort of on the nose it is with that comedy. Yeah. And yeah, it's terrifying, but absolutely hilarious. Next film we have is Ed Wood. Now I've actually seen this film. I saw this film a really long time ago, like I'm talking years. So it's pretty much gonna be like watching it again for the first time, just cause it has been that long. And I just really like the idea of the movie. Obviously it's shot in black and white, but it is about a director named Ed Wood. He's one of those directors from I think the fifties and sixties who was known for making like the worst movies. <laughs> Off the top of my head, I think he did Plan 9 from Outer Space and a few others. I could be wrong, I apologize if, if I am. It's a great cast and look forward to actually finally watching this one again after so long. So this is another film that falls under the category of films that I desperately want Matt to watch and it is I Am Not A Serial Killer. Uh, this film is very, very low key. Like I was surprised by how good it is and it, it feels very indie. I'm not sure if it is. It actually has a uh, Christopher Lloyd in it from Back to the Future and the twist within it and like the twists and turns that the, the narrative takes is really good. Yeah, definitely interesting watch. This next Blu-ray is also from Second Sight actually and this is Southern Comfort. 
directed by Walter Hill, who I really like from, you know, you see he did The Warriors, which is fantastic, and he's done a bunch of other great films. And it's got a good cast. It's got uh, Powers Booth, uh, Keith Carradine, and Fred Ward from Tremors, of course. <laughs> and, yeah, it just seems like a really cool um, idea, like, the, the plot, plot-wise. So looking forward to giving this one a watch. This is one of my uh, favourite pickups from this haul, and that is The Orphanage. Now, this is one of the most tragic horror movies I have ever seen. Um, Matt hasn't watched it yet. It's sort of like a... I guess like a haunted house sort of movie or at least that's what it seems like just a tragic story really I, that's I, w I don't want to go too much into it but I highly recommend it uh, if you can stomach the sadness that is <laughs> <laughs> next up we have the film Bone Tomahawk with a cool slip cover actually and this one is directed by what's his name yeah, S Craig Zala <laughs> again I print really bad at pronouncing names but he did Brawl in Cell Block 99 and also Dragged Across Concrete and I have watched this movie I remember thinking it was a little bit long which is funny enough another criticism I have of those other two films I just mentioned I always feel like his films just gotten a little bit too long but the actual content is really cool it's like a western obviously it's got Kurt Russell in it and um, it's got some really great gore scenes in it too <laughs> so but it has been a couple of years since I last watched it so I'm looking forward to giving it another watch and you haven't seen it, have you no <laughs> yeah i think i think you might like it yeah maybe not one or two scenes but yeah <laughs> we have the boston strangler with tony curtis and henry fonda so this is a movie from the 60s but i've heard that tony curtis's performance in this is like highly revered like Hmm. and I'm not one to pass up a good serial killer movie. I recently watched Sweet Smell of Success with Tony Curtis, and I absolutely love that movie, so it'd be good to watch another film with him in it. And I'm curious, like, I know this is about, you know, a serial killer. I wonder if it'd be a good pairing with Ten Rillington Place, which is also a really good serial killer starring, starring Richard Attenborough, and it's got John Hurt in it as well. So I remember when I got this one, that movie was on my mind, so I'm curious if there's going to be, if they're going to be similar at all. Similarities, yeah. yeah. Also from that movie lot, we have Village of the Damned, and I've talked about this before where, you know, I pick up a movie based on the director. Um, this one's obviously directed by John Carpenter, who I absolutely love. I don't need to go into how much I love his films, just know that I adore his films. This is like one of his, I guess, not his most biggest film, obviously, but like I've known the name of this movie for so long, I just haven't gotten around to ever watching it. So I know a lot of people have seen this, although I'm not sure how people feel about it. So very curious about it. And, you know, as I said, his name's attached to it, so I'm going to watch it. We have Incendies. I think that's how you say it. And this is by the same guy who did Blade Runner 2049 and Arrival, which I really loved. I loved Arrival. This film is about a woman who returns to the Middle East to fulfill her mum's last wishes. And that's pretty much all we know about this film. <laughs> it's a drama movie and it has like some things uh, surrounding war. But yeah, can't wait to check this one out. It sounds really interesting and anything by that director is pretty highly yeah, probably reviewed, a safe so. bet, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's not going to be trash. This next film is Only God Forgives. And we've said this a few times already in this Blu-ray haul video, but I got this movie because I know the director, um, not personally, but yeah, um, <laughs> Nicholas Winding Refn. Um, he obviously did The Neon Demon, uh, which I really, really liked. And, you know, I wanted to give this one a go. I had heard really mixed things about it. And after having watched it, I can't see why. Where we sort of made the argument for The Neon Demon being, I think, a decent balance between style and substance. This one definitely feels more style than substance. I still enjoyed watching it. In particular, there's some really like hyper violent scenes in it, which I thought was really good. And I liked the Thailand setting. Um, but it just, I think it fell a bit flat on the, on the narrative front and the dialogues felt very unrealistic at times. I didn't really buy the dynamic between Ryan Gosling's character and Kristen Scott Davis, who pl I think plays his mother. A bit mixed on it. I have a feeling I'd like it a bit more the next time I watched it, but yeah, sort of lukewarm on this one. We have Watership Down. I didn't actually realize this, um, has John Hurt in it. So it is definitely, it's an animation. <laughs> Let's just be clear about that. <laughs> but I've heard this is like one of the most depressing films ever made. Personally. So of course we're going to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> if it's like nihilistic and it's an animation, that usually turns me off. But I will watch it because it is apparently a classic. This next one is Bronson, which is also directed by Nicholas Winning Refn. Um, and I'm about halfway through this one. I, I think we stopped it because we we're on our way to dinner or something like that. But I need to finish it off. And yeah, I'm liking it so far. Tom Hardy in particular is obviously a great actor and he's really sort of invested himself in this role. And, you know, it's based on, I think, Britain's most uh, dangerous prisoner, I think they call him. Mm -hmm. Stylized, you know, obviously it's Nicholas Winnie Griffin, so you know, we know to expect that, but it does feel a little bit more mainstream. I'm definitely liking this at the moment. I know my brother and my father are actually big fans of this movie, so I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes. But yeah, enjoying it for sure at the moment. We have another John Waters film and that is Crybaby. 
Now this film, I always see like the crybaby aesthetic, like the rockabilly look and people referencing this all the time in like pop culture. But this is really interesting because it features a uh, young Tracy Lords and a uh, young Ricky Lake as well. I didn't even like recognize her in this movie. Uh, but yeah, I can't wait to check this one out. And it's John Waters, so I know it's going to be batshit. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Insomnia. And this is the American remake directed by Christopher Nolan and starring Al Pacino and Robin Williams. And I, I think I may have mentioned it in, an other, in, in another Criterion video, but I recently watched the actual original film, which I think maybe came out of Denmark or some other Scandinavian country. And they're both, I think, very different in a lot of ways, especially tonally. And you, um, as far as your sympathy for the main character, at least, I mean, it's been a while since I've watched that film, this, this particular remake, but that's the feeling that I got when I watched the original. And yet yeah, I don't mind this movie. It's not my favorite from Christopher Nolan, but you know, I can't deny that the performances are really good. And yeah, just look forward again to rewatching it. We have the dark comedy, Very Bad Things. Matt has seen this and his mum actually raves on about this film. And I believe there's like, it's set like with, at a bachelor party and someone gets accidentally murdered and the night sort of descends into chaos from there. Mm, and, like they turn on each other and they try and cover it up and just, yeah, shit goes wild. But yeah, I love a good dark comedy and I love Cameron Diaz. So we'll uh, check this one out. Here we have Manhunter. And this is one that I've been really wanting to watch for quite a long time because, you know, obviously I'm a big fan of Silence of the Lambs and even the sequels, actually. I really liked Hannibal, uh, Red Dragon, which is also, which is actually the story that this one is based on as well. Um, and this one obviously came out before Silence of the Lambs and I think the late 80s and it's directed by Michael Mann. It's been a long time coming, so I'm really looking forward to watching this one. We have The Boys from Brazil with Gregory Peck and Laurence Olivier. I haven't seen the Laurence Olivier film since, like, was he Hamlet or was he Macbeth or... One of, <laughs> one of those films at least but this one i can't wait to check out because it's such a unique like, plot and it's about a scientist uh, a nazi scientist cloning hitler what an interesting concept for a yeah, sci-fi film just the premise alone is enough to make me want to watch it speaking of hitler <laughs> we have another hitler oriented film this is downfall I think this came out about 2004 and I watched this a few nights ago. I really, really loved it. I remember back when I was really young and YouTube was just starting and all those Hitler, angry Hitler parodies that you see on YouTube where they miss subtitle him that, that's lifted from clips from this movie. And yeah, just, I really like um, just the idea of it as well. It's based on Hitler's last uh, few days um, before, you know, he kills himself um, or whatever. But uh, yeah, just a really cool story. Some really graphic moments, actually. I didn't expect to see... There's not a lot of gore, but like when they happen, it's like really visceral. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. Sometimes it's a bit hard to keep track of who's who and what the relationships are between these people. But on the whole, I think it's a really decently told story and one that I do recommend if you like your World War II films. We have Cape Fear. And this is the remake with Robert De Niro, Jessica Lange and Nick Nolte. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad I watched this film. It is absolutely brilliant. You can tell the budget on this was ridiculously high, especially in that last scene on a boat. <laughs> this is really good because I haven't seen too many Robert De Niro films where he plays such an evil, evil bastard. So <laughs> yeah. it was really good to watch and it was really intense as well. Next up, we have another German film, I believe. This is Das Boot. <laughs> I think I'm saying that correctly. I feel like, I feel like I'm not saying that right. Um, but yeah, this one's supposed to be excellent. I've, this is on the, like the IMDb top 250 films of all time, I believe. And um, it's basically there. It's based on a uh, submarine crew who are tasked with a specific mission during World War II. And like, I just know that there's a big thing about this movie is like claustrophobia and these, these crew members being stuck together in this tiny space. And it really drives home that sort of cramped you know, isolating feeling. And after watching Downfall, I'm sort of on a World War II movie kick, so I'm sure it'll be good. We have the critically acclaimed Frankenstein's Army. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know enough about this movie, but I hope, I, I'm guessing that's sarcasm. <laughs> yes, it is. But it actually looks all right. Like, I love a good zombie film. And this is about a, a bunch of German soldiers who uh, accidentally run into Dr. Frankenstein as he's stitching together sort of zombie super soldiers for the Germans. That sounds badass. Maybe a good pairing with Dead Snow. Dead Snow, yep. Yeah. Um, the Outpost movies as well, sort mm. of similar vibe, like sort of Nazi zombies. So yeah, we'll see how this one goes. This next film is Ghost Dog, Way of the Samurai. 
all the things about this movie, it makes sense for me to like it. It's, you know, a modern day um, movie, you know, in an urban setting. But, you know, a lot of the themes from the older samurai films have been incorporated into this, obviously, directly. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm really curious to see how they actually approach that side of it. But Forrest Whitaker, who plays the main character, I think he's like a hitman who follows the samurai code. I'm very curious about how that's going to play out. But, um, yeah, if you've seen this one, let me know what you think. We have We Are What We Are. Now, this is the American remake. And I've just started watching the um, original and it's about a family of cannibals who uh, the head of the house, the father who sort of collects the hum human remains to eat, he actually dies and the family is sort of left to sort of fend for themselves. And I know that the original is very highly acclaimed, but I can't say the same about the American. I know it's not as good, but we'll definitely be the judges, judges of that when we finally watch it. So... Yeah. This next Blu-ray is from Studio Canal, I believe, and this is the classic Jacob's Ladder. And I watched this one for the first time, I think I was like 13 or 14, so I, I could barely remember it. Um, but I watched it again when I first, when we picked this one up, and I absolutely loved it. Just such the twists and turns that the story takes, and just visually there's a lot of really cool shots and like the creatures or like monster demon things, whatever you want to call them. Um, really, really creepy looking in this. And he's descent into like, I guess you could say madness, but just like him experiencing this change in reality is just a really cool thing to watch on screen. And um, yeah, just a staple like horror movie. If you haven't watched this one, I highly recommend it. And after watching it, I read that it was a direct influence on things like Silent Hill and a few other things. And I can definitely see why. Um, really, really great movie. So we have The Breed with Michelle Rodriguez. And we're always on the lookout for new uh, werewolf films or werewolf films we haven't seen. And this one sounds really interesting. It's a, a group of friends go to a remote island to party and they get attacked by werewolves. We'll see if it's any decent. It says uh, it's presented by Wes Craven. So that could mean any number of things, honestly. Yeah. In the past, we've had a few people ask us whether or not we are familiar with this franchise, and I've always had to say no. I mean, we've obviously we've heard about this franchise, but we'd never watched any of the films, so I thought, you know, it'd be cool to get this in the Blu-ray lot so we can finally check them out. Um, we've got the first five films from the Puppet Master franchise, so in this box set you get the first three, and then we have separately have um, number four and number five from um, 88 Films, actually is really cool um yeah it might be a bit uh might have overstepped trying to buy so many to start with but as i said it was part of the blu-ray lot so it worked out to be really cheap which is great i don't know what to expect as far as quality or you know enjoyment i mean i, I know this has a pretty big fan base so i'm sure they're going to be fun at least the first few and i think they go all the way up maybe to even like 12 or so film. i could be wrong but <laughs> we'll see if we get to that point so a few weeks back i did a video on an intro to new french extremity and I really wanted to watch this film before I did the video, but I couldn't get it in time. And that is Them. And this is a home invasion movie. I don't know a whole lot about it. I know that it's about a couple who wake up on night to find that people are trying to get into their house. That's all I know. And I like going in blind to most of these extreme films, just so I'm shocked by all the content that... <laughs> that comes up. <laughs> so I think about two videos back, we I did a Severin sale unboxing, and I mentioned in that video that uh, this film had to come separately just because it was out of stock at the time that they were shipping my order. But it's finally here. Um, that is Santa Sangre, directed by Alejandro Jodorowsky. And yeah, very excited to watch this film. I heard, I heard about this film for the first time probably like maybe 10 years ago. People, A lot of people say this is his most accessible film, but also that it's actually one of his best films, if not his best film. So obviously I know that would change depending on who you ask, but the idea of it being his most accessible film interests me because, you know, I, I'm new to his filmography. We have Wes Craven's My Soul to Take. I remember watching this like ages ago when I was a teenager. And I can't remember a whole lot about it, but I do remember absolutely enjoying it. It's like, a, it was a pretty decent slasher. And it's pretty much about seven teenagers who were all born on the same day. And they get targeted by a killer in their hometown. It'd be interesting, especially considering it is one of Wes Craven's later films. So these next three releases are going to be from Umbrella Entertainment. We actually posted a picture of these on our Instagram, which you can find a link to in our description. <laughs> um, this is Apt Pupil which is a St Stephen King film adaptation. It's it's pretty decent. I think it's put sort of middle of the road as a Stephen King film adaptation. Um, a lot of good things about it, some negatives in particular. I don't really buy the relationship between our main character and Ian McKellen's character. I find that the, the younger guy, he's sort of descent into madness and like, 
I just didn't really buy it. I thought like it happened too quickly and it just wasn't very believable. An interesting premise and you know, if you are trying to work through say Stephen, uh, Stephen King film adaptations, this is definitely a decent one. We have Come to Daddy, a film by Ant Timpson starring Elijah Wood. And I was extremely pleasantly surprised by this film. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Um, I really love when Elijah Wood is in like sort of indie films. Uh, another one that I would probably pair with this is, uh, I think it's called I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore. But this film really plays with audiences' expectations of how the narrative's going to play out. And I thought it was going to play out one way and it absolutely took a 180. It was amazing. <laughs> But yeah, highly recommend this one if you haven't checked it out. So this last one from Umbrella Entertainment is actually a double feature and it's got VFW and Bliss. Um, you know, we've watched VFW and we really, really liked that one. Just a really fun movie set in the one location at the Veterans Bar. Very Grindhouse-like, you know, hyper, um, hyper action, hyper violence, I should say, sorry. And um, yeah, like the punks and like the villains kind of cool. Um, not many, too, not too many negative things to say about it. Just a really fun movie. Um, I will say though, lighting wise you know they did play around with some like reds and blues that sort of neon thing going on but sometimes physically seeing what was going on in the frame is a bit hard it was mm -hmm. very dark at times so i don't know if it was just our setup but that's the yeah it was kind of consistently dark throughout the film so it was a bit frustrating so these next three that i'm going to be showing now and a couple of others a bit later as well um you know it, it goes without saying with these blu-ray holes obviously it's a decent mix of ones that we have watched and ones that we're yet to see but with box sets given the nature of them you know there's multiple movies inside them so finding the time to watch them all before we film a video can be really tough so just a forewarning that we haven't actually watched these films Films yet and these are three box sets from artificial eye and i'll just show them now and i really like the ideas of these sets um they all come with i think four movies in each of them and they're all centered around a particular theme um i should be unboxing them on camera for you right now and um these three box sets that i got here for example uh one of them is based on oscar winners um the other one's on palm door winners and the third one is just uh contemporary british cinema and just to quickly rattle off a couple of the movies, I won't read them all because it's like 12 of them. But, you know, we've got We Need to Talk About Kevin, which we really liked. Um, it's got Fish Tank in that one. And in another box set, we've got um, A Separation and Ida. And in the Palm Door winners, we've got Four Months, Three Weeks and Two Days. And Blue is the Warmest Colour, which I actually have heard a few good things about. So um, really, really great value of these sets. Um, I'm really glad to have them in our collection. There's definitely a few in these box sets that we've been wanting to watch for some time. So... Really glad to add these to our collection and add to our artificial eye collection, which I don't think we have many of. So yeah, really great to have these. This was another franchise that I didn't realize we actually didn't own. So we got the Indiana Jones 4 films. So I believe Temple of Doom is definitely the magnum opus. You really? might disagree. I do, but that's all right. What do you think is the best? Raiders. Raiders? Mm. I just like when they have the monkey brain soup. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Uh, definitely the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. When I first watched it in cinemas, I was really with it. I really enjoyed it. I love Shia LaBeouf. And then the ending happened and it made no freaking sense. <laughs> <laughs> As Sarah already mentioned, like we've seen these films countless times. It's just yeah. one of those film series we just didn't actually physically own. So yeah, cool to have the box set finally. Absolutely. Now this film we actually already had in our collection, but we wanted an edition that included the theatrical cut and the director's cut. So we decided to upgrade and we got William Friedkin's The Exorcist. I don't even need to talk about this film, but I will anyway. This film, it personally starts off a bit slow, to, slow for me, but it builds up to just such an amazing storyline and no film apart from Gore Verbinski's The Ring has terrified me so much. There's something about a, a little girl in a dress with a messed up face haunting people. <laughs> I don't know. It's terrifying. It's a common theme in your favorite scary movies, isn't yes. it? Yes. <laughs> if you want to terrify me, that's how. So as I already mentioned before, with the artificial eye box sets, same goes for these and that I haven't watched them yet. Um, but this is the John uh, Jean-Pierre Melville box set. Um, and the Jean-Luc Godard box set, um, both by Studio Canal. I actually posted a picture of these to um, the Boutique Blu-ray subreddit and people were giving me you know, suggestions on what movies I should prioritize, which is really great. Um, these just dropped down to a really awesome price on Amazon and you know, obviously I'd heard about Jean-Luc Godard and I had, um, I did know about Jean-Pierre Melville as well. These names are really hard to say. <laughs> um, but yeah, really keen to watch these movies, of course. I know um, Breathless by um, Godard is one that I've heard about for so long. And just all of these movies are just incredibly well received. Um, so really excited to watch more French cinema in general as well. So very excited. So we have two Second Sight box sets to show you today. And the first one is Lee Wanell's Upgrade. 
starring Logan Marshall Green. This film, I absolutely am the biggest fan of Lee Whannell. I think he's a fantastic filmmaker. He and James Wan are like one of my biggest inspirations for getting into film. When Lee Whannell was actually writing this film, the plotline sounds extremely similar to Venom. They both star uh, two stars that look alike, Tom Hardy and Logan Marshall Green, and they're both about two men who sort of have something go inside them that makes them sort of super cool at fighting. <laughs> so, <laughs> oddly, yeah. Very oddly specific. Hey? Yeah, very oddly specific. And uh, I think he's lying when he said he hadn't heard of Venom because it sounds very similar. But yeah, fantastic movie. And yeah, can't wait to watch it again. So this will be the last time I say it, but I promise you need to watch this film. It's great. And that is Under the Shadow. So a young mother and her daughter are stuck in Iran after their uh, apartment building gets bombed. And the mother decides to stay behind even though she could seek shelter somewhere else. And they start to get haunted by this um, ghostly figure. And it feels very claustrophobic, the film. And the film actually has a lot to say about the political landscape of Iran in the 1970s. Like there is a particular scene where she gets haunted by the ghost and she runs out of her apartment. But she actually gets arrested because she doesn't have a head covering on. And uh, she has to hide her Jane Fonda worker tapes in the bin in case anyone comes by and realizes that she has sort of American material. And I think it's a, like a really interesting comment and um, works as a really good horror movie at the same time. So you need to check it out. And it's interesting that you say that this is the only Iranian film that you've seen, because I remember I mentioned in, a, in our previous Criterion US Blu-ray haul that um, Taste of Cherry, which is one of our recent pickups, yes. that was one of the only Iranian films that I had ever seen. So if I watch that, you've got to watch Taste of Cherry. So we'll see about that. <laughs> I'm so proud to present this film. This is both Suspiria movies in one huge box set. And this is one of uh, the grand pieces of our collection. And I'm really disappointed actually, because when it arrived, it had this sticker on it. And we thought, oh, let's remove the sticker. It was already half peeled off, which was well, the only way, otherwise we probably would have left it, but it was already half off. So we decided to peel the rest of it off. It's just absolutely disappointing, but let's get into the movies. Suspiria, the original by Dario Argento is definitely his best work. I'm mm. just calling it now. <laughs> it is amazing. It it, com it perfectly combines the yeah. giallo genre with um, with supernatural themes, don't you think? Yeah, I think Suspiria, Deep Red, and Tenebrae are probably my top three Argento films, and the order of those three probably change a lot, but there's something just so unique about Suspiria. I just absolutely adore the use of color. Um, this, the, even just the plot, like the, you know, the witches and just, you know, the, the ballet set, academy, yeah, set at the dance academy, just, I don't know, it's just so many cool things going for this movie. And, uh, we, we've only watched the 2018 remake of Suspiria once when it was showing in cinemas and we actually got free tickets to that because we won like a Facebook competition or something like that, which is cool. But, um, yeah, it'd be cool to rewatch the, this, the remake because I remember we didn't mind it. It's definitely a pretty big departure from the original. I remember the biggest difference was the lack of color, I think. Yes. Uh, it has been a couple of years. I think it came out in 2018. It so it felt very subdued in terms of like the shots. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's. There was some. I remember the remake being very extremely creepy and horrific yeah. in ways that the original was. The original is still very creepy, but just in a different way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as I keep saying, like it's been a while since we've watched it. Um, it would be really great to revisit the remake and, of course, the original. We, we're always looking for an excuse to rewatch that one. So we finally have an amazing edition of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is an incredible looking set, limited <laughs> to 1100 copies. And just so many cool things included inside it. Obviously, of course, we'll be showing you on camera now, but just the overall design of this, I thought was just fantastic. And, you know, don't even need to say much about the original film, but, you know, just brilliant. One of the best horror films ever made. And, you know, it's we get- It's cool. <laughs> no, it definitely is, I reckon. And, you know, you get little cool leather face figurine. You get like a little, uh, a German media book. This is a German release, I believe. Um, and the media books are limited to 5,000. So I think what happened here was the box set they made 1,100 copies of it included the media book, but then sold the media book on its own afterwards. That's why this one's limited to 5,000, but the box is 1,100. But you get a cool media book, you get the Leatherface figurine, you get some cool art cards and like some <laughs> number plates. You even get a shirt, which I doubt will fit me, but that's okay. And you even you get two massive posters, which when Sarah and I get our own place, we will definitely be framing. Yes. So absolutely amazing addition really like, definitely one of my favorites in our entire collection i can't wait to display this as well so 
Sorry about the car there. So that brings us to the end of our Blu-ray haul video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, we did try and talk a little bit quicker in this video, but I have a feeling it's still probably going to be a longer yeah. one. It just shows how much we end up buying. Um, but yeah, we got some excellent deals on these. And, you know, we're really excited to show you what we have, especially these last two few box sets. So um, let us know what you think of the films that we picked. Um, you know, we'd love to hear from you guys as far as, you know, what movies you'd recommend from the ones that we haven't watched yet or just your thoughts on them in general. It's always great to talk to you guys. So... Yeah, thank you very much as always for watching and we'll see you in the next video.